As the British Metropolitan Police warn of an evolving threat posed by extremists, the launch of a nationwide terrorism awareness campaign saw British Home Secretary Theresa May today announce an intensification of the government's response to the heightened terror threat. So when the security and intelligence agencies tell us that the threat we face is now more dangerous than at any time before or since 9-11, we should take notice. I can therefore confirm, as the Prime Minister first announced this summer, the government will on Wednesday introduce a new counter-terrorism and security bill. The changes included insurance companies being banned from footing the cost of terrorist ransoms allowing the cancellation of the passports of suspects who are overseas so they can only return to the UK on the government's terms, to give authorities the power to force suspects to move to another part of the country, making it compulsory for public bodies like schools, colleges and prisons to work to prevent terrorism and forcing internet providers to hand details to police, identifying who was using a computer or mobile phone at any given time. The changes which are set to be included in an anti-terrorism and security bill will be published on Wednesday. However, May had hoped to go further. She was prevented to do so due to pressure from the Liberal Democrats. This is a step forward, but it is not all the way, and it will still be the case, even with these IP addresses being, uh, being within the legislation, uh, it is st will still be the case that the National Crime Agency, CEOP and others, uh, will still not be able to identify everybody who is accessing right. illegal content on the net. Although the Liberal Democrats, who had previously opposed such plans, said they supported the anti-terrorism and security bill, they did, however, add that they will be blocking wider data collection measures. It is good news that the Home Office has finally got round to producing proposals on this after being repeatedly asked by Nick Clegg. This is exactly the kind of thing we need to take action on, rather than proposing an unnecessary, unworkable and disproportionate Snoopers Charter. As the coalition scuffles over how far snooping on people's private lives should be legalised, Theresa May hopes to fast-track the new legislation, claiming that the move is part of a package of changes designed to tighten up protections in the UK, amid warnings that the threat of an attack here is growing. Well, Mr. Charles Shoebridge, who's a security analyst, is joining us over the phone to discuss this matter further. Mr. Shoebridge, Firstly, does the UK need more terror laws? Well, arguably it does, um, but that is irrespective in a way of whether, um, as is being claimed widely uh, this week, of course, police officers, uh, senior police officers and um, behind the scenes briefings are taking place of the media all this week up to the run up, as you say, of the publication of this bill and then it's debate in, in Parliament. Uh, of course, that's not a coincidence that they're doing the rounds of the TV studios, but irrespective of whether the uh, quantity of the threat has uh, evolved um, over the years as they're maintaining it has. In other words, we face a far greater threat now, this is the claim, but irrespective of that, technology's moved on. So some parts of this bill make uh, good sense in terms of, for example, tying uh, police uh, requests to internet companies to um, IP addresses that, of course, can change um, uh, with respect to individual smartphones and so on. So some of this is necessary in that respect. Also, of course, um, Arguably, some of this legislation, though, is long overdue. For example, placing a duty on colleges, public bodies to actively work to prevent terrorism. This, of course, um, depending on how it's enforced and how it actually works in practice, um, is to be welcomed. But a lot of this, um, Bill, the devil will be in the detail here and how it's going to be practically applied on the ground. And that particularly applies, for example, to the, um, um, the provisions that you've mentioned in respect of people, for example, returning from places such as Syria and Iraq. And how effective do you think these measures are? As you said, the, the devil is in the detail. How effective will it be in curbing the threat of this so-called rise uh, uh, terrorist threat uh, domestic soil? Well, of course, uh, and of course, the backdrop to this is, of course, that uh, Britain and uh, other countries such as France are rushing to catch up, catch up here because, after all, um, existing legislation uh, that goes back <clears throat> to 2006 in this country has allowed the prosecution of those who 
um, go off to Syria, uh, Iraq, and fight for groups such as Islamic State and their forerunners. But, of course, uh, arguably, so long as those people, uh, as in, was the case in Syria until around December, were fighting on the same side, effectively, as the UK, no action was taken uh, by police and authorities. And really, uh, arrests and prosecutions have only really taken place with them some force since uh, ISIS turned on the rebels uh, that were backed by the UK and turned on, um, of course, Iraq. So there's an element of blowback here. So in some ways, this is now uh, the government saying something must be done. Uh, it gives an excuse for why uh, no enforcement was taken place before. But again, it's going to be difficult to see how, for example, people can be um, kept out of the United Kingdom for any particular length of time. But also, of course, arguably, if they're kept from returning home, these jihadists, then, of course, again, some may argue, well, of course, that then forces them to continue carrying out terrorism abroad. So really, it just displaces the problem. Um, secondly, of course, the um, Home Secretary is saying that uh, people won't be allowed back into the United Kingdom unless they um, consent to uh, being investigated and um, having measures taken against them. This is very strange to me as a former investigator because, of course, um, the police, the authorities have never needed the permission of the uh, suspect to carry out investigations against them. And so um, in many ways, it's, um, it, it, to some degree, it appears that this is showing that something's being done. Um, it sounds dramatic, but it's, whilst it might have some impact on civil liberties, some of these um, respects and provisions are unlikely in, in real practical terms, I think, to have a very great bearing on uh, preventing terrorism. And, and in regards to the point of civil liberties, one of the points is they are going to have a wider collection of data uh, and that is going to be made available to the police. Uh, does that um, somehow affect the civil liberties of the British public in the UK? Have it they depends taken on the that direction of travel here. Um, it's a good question and it's one that um, civil liberties campaigners are already addressing today um, in radio and television interviews. Um, <clears throat> a lot depends on the direction of travel here. The Home Secretary has said that um, in, indeed, in that clip that you just played, that it's just the start, that effectively the government is trying to push, or the Conservative part of the government, because it's a coalition government, is trying to, uh, in effect, it would appear, resurrect the snooper's charter that you referred to that was killed off by the Liberal Democrats some time ago, which is basically blanket collection of data. Um, at the moment, these proposals, uh, in terms of the technical changes um, that they suggest, in other words, in respect to um, individual IP addresses, it still seems to be the case that this is going to have to be on a case-by-case -case basis, in which case um, there's going to have to be some suspicion that those people being targeted are involved yes. in some kind of criminal activity. And, of course, that's to be welcomed. It's What's not to be welcomed is that this, this extends to the public as a whole in a mass collection data exercise. Mr. Charles Shubridge, Security Analyst, thank you very much for joining us.